breathed, her voice cutting through the tumult like a beacon of hope. I am alive, she declared, her words a testament to the inexplicable twist of fortune that had spared her from certain doom. But it was not until she gestured towards the madman, who sat calmly... De Karasela and the madman, in the bustling village of Akure, nestled under the shade of a towering tree, older than memory itself, lived Mama Ife, a spirited 60-year-old woman, renowned for her delicious akara, or bean cakes. For 15 years, Mama Ife had greeted each day under the leafy canopy, frying her golden brown delicacies to perfection. But amidst the regular bustle of customers and village life, there lurked a familiar figure, the village madman. Known for his erratic behavior and unpredictable movements, the madman was a fixture in Akure wandering the streets with a haunting presence. Despite his condition, he possessed an unwavering fondness for Mama Ife Zakara. Every morning, like clockwork, the madman would shuffle over to Mama Ife's spot beneath the tree, his eyes wild yet somehow hopeful, as he silently begged for a taste of her savory treats. And without fail, Mama Ife would oblige, serving him with a smile that belied her understanding of his plight. But one fateful morning, the routine was disrupted. As Mama Ife prepared her akara, the madman approached from across the road, his usual path seemingly diverted by an unseen force. Standing at a distance, he called out to Mama Ife, his voice trembling with urgency. Bring the akara to me, he demanded, his tone uncharacteristically firm. Perplexed yet amused by his peculiar request, Mama Ife chuckled softly. Is this how your madness wants it today? She teased, playfully accepting the challenge. Setting aside her frying pan, Mama Ife carefully wrapped the freshly fried akara in a banana leaf before venturing across the road to meet the madman's gaze. With a curious glint in her eye, she handed him the parcel, a silent exchange tinged with an inexplicable sense of foreboding. And then, in a moment that would forever alter the course of fate, the ground beneath them trembled, and with a deafening crack, the ancient tree collapsed in a cascade of splintered branches and swirling dust. As chaos erupted in the village, cries of anguish filled the air, mingling with the disbelief of those who bore witness to the sudden tragedy. Amidst the panic and confusion, Mama Ife emerged unscathed, her voice cutting through the tumult like a beacon of hope. I am alive! she declared, her words a testament to the inexplicable twist of fortune that had spared her from certain doom. But it was not until she gestured towards the madman, who sat calmly devouring his akara, that the truth of her miraculous escape became clear. In his seemingly erratic demand lay the key to her salvation, a silent guardian in the guise of madness. And as the villagers gathered around in awe and gratitude, Mama Ife's heart swelled with a newfound appreciation for the mysterious workings of fate and the unlikely hero who had unwittingly become her savior. In the aftermath of the tree's collapse, the village of Akure buzzed with speculation and rumor. Whispers of supernatural intervention and divine providence swirled through the air, mingling with the acrid scent of charred wood and the palpable sense of awe that hung heavy over the once familiar landscape. As Mama Ife's tale spread like wildfire, drawing curious onlookers from neighboring villages and distant corners of the countryside, the madman found himself thrust into the spotlight, his enigmatic presence suddenly imbued with an aura of reverence and intrigue. For years he had been a solitary figure, shunned by society and relegated to the fringes of village life. But now, as the unlikely hero of Mama Ife's miraculous escape, he stood at the center of attention his every word and gesture scrutinized with newfound fascination. Yet amid the fervor of adulation and praise, a shadow of doubt lingered in the hearts of some. How could a man deemed mad by society's standards possess such profound insight and foresight? Was his demand for Akara merely a stroke of luck, or did it hint at a deeper wisdom concealed beneath the veneer of madness? As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the mystery deepened, weaving its tendrils through the fabric of everyday life in Akure. Mama Ife continued to ply her trade beneath the now vacant space where the fallen tree once stood, her grateful customers offering prayers of thanks and gestures of goodwill to the heavens above. But as time wore on, whispers of discontent began to surface among the villagers, 
fueled by envy and resentment at the newfound fame and fortune that had befallen Mama Ife and the madman alike. Rumors spread like wildfire, casting doubt upon the authenticity of the madman's actions and questioning the true motives behind his seemingly altruistic deed. And then, just when it seemed that the dust had settled and life in Akure had returned to a semblance of normalcy, tragedy struck once more, casting a dark shadow over the village and plunging its inhabitants into a maelstrom of fear and uncertainty. One fateful night, under the cover of darkness, Mama Ife's humble abode was engulfed in flames, reducing everything she held dear to a smoldering heap of ash and rubble. The villagers watched helplessly as the inferno raged unchecked, their hearts heavy with sorrow and disbelief at the cruel twist of fate that had befallen their beloved Akara cellar. As dawn broke over the scorched remains of Mama Eve's home, the village stood united in grief, their sense of loss tempered by a steely resolve to uncover the truth behind the tragic events that had rocked their community to its core. And amidst the ashes of despair, one question echoed in the minds of all who bore witness to the devastation. Who would dare to destroy the home of a woman who had been spared from death's grasp by the whims of a madman's demand for Akara? In the wake of Mama Ife's devastating loss, the village of Akure descended into a state of mourning tinged with simmering anger. The once vibrant streets now echoed with somber whispers and hushed conversations as suspicions ran rampant and accusations flew like arrows in the wind. The investigation into the fire yielded few clues, leaving the villagers grasping at shadows and half-truths in their desperate quest for justice. Some whispered of jealousy and rivalry, pointing fingers at those who harbored resentment towards Mama Ife's newfound fame and fortune. Others spoke of darker forces at play, weaving tales of betrayal and deceit that sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls. But amidst the chaos and confusion, one name remained conspicuously absent from the growing list of suspects, the village madman. Despite his newfound status as a local hero, the madman had retreated into the shadows once more, his presence a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lay hidden beneath the surface of Akure's tranquil facade. And as the days stretched into weeks, his absence only served to deepen the sense of unease that hung heavy over the village like a shroud. Yet even in his absence, the madman's influence lingered, casting a long shadow over the hearts and minds of those who dared to question the nature of his madness. For beneath his seemingly erratic exterior lay a mind sharp and keen, capable of piercing through the veil of deception that cloaked the truth in layers of darkness and deceit. As the investigation into Mama Ife's fire continued, new revelations came to light, each more shocking than the last. Whispers of clandestine meetings and hidden agendas spread like wildfire, painting a picture of a village torn apart by greed and ambition. And at the center of it all stood Mama Ife, her spirit unbroken despite the trials that had befallen her, her unwavering faith in the goodness of humanity serving as a beacon of hope in the gathering storm. But as the villagers grappled with the harsh realities of their fractured community, one question remained unanswered. Who would dare to destroy the home of a woman who had been spared from death's grasp by the whims of a madman's demand for Akara? And what secrets lay hidden beneath the surface of Akure's tranquil facade, waiting to be unearthed by those brave enough to seek the truth? As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the village of Akure slowly began to heal from the wounds inflicted by tragedy and betrayal. Through the tireless efforts of its inhabitants, the truth behind Mama Ife's fire was finally revealed, laying bare the depths of human greed and the consequences of unchecked ambition. It was discovered that the arsonist was none other than a disgruntled neighbor who harbored envy towards Mama Ife's success. Fueled by jealousy and resentment, they had plotted to destroy her livelihood, heedless of the devastation their actions would wreak upon the community. But even in the face of such darkness, there emerged a glimmer of light, for in their darkest hour, the people of Akure had come together as one, united by a shared sense of purpose and a commitment to justice. Through their perseverance and determination, they had exposed the truth and brought the perpetrator to account for their crimes. 
and as Mama Ife's home was rebuilt from the ashes, a sense of renewal swept through the village, washing away the stains of doubt and suspicion that had clouded their hearts and minds. In its place grew a newfound appreciation for the bonds of friendship and the strength of community, forged in the crucible of adversity and tempered by the fires of resilience. For in the end it was not the actions of a madman or the whims of fate that determined their destiny, but the choices they made in the face of adversity. And though the road ahead might be fraught with challenges and uncertainties, the people of Akure faced the future with courage and hope, knowing that together they could overcome any obstacle that stood in their way. And so, the story of Mama Ife and the madman came to a close, leaving behind a legacy of resilience and redemption that would be remembered for generations to come. For in their journey, they had taught the villagers of Akure a valuable lesson, that true strength lies not in the might of one's arm, but in the courage to stand together in the face of adversity and the willingness to embrace the power of forgiveness and reconciliation. And in doing so, they had shown that even in the darkest of times, there is always light to be found for those who dare to seek it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, comment and press the notification button to our channel for more interesting and captivating stories. See you in the next.